So, 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning, getting in the car, auto, not awake yet. Is it vlog, vlog? I mean, everybody, the Americans call it vlogging, right? But at the end of the day, it's a made up word, and you know, I'm not done to speak English, I am English. Debating whether I go to the football tomorrow. My hometown club Fleetwood are playing at Walsall, which is near Birmingham. It's about an hour and a half away. I feel so tired this morning that I don't really want to go because I know that I'm going to need the rest. And this is a really important part, especially when you're self-employed, is that when you have a free time, use it wisely because quite often you need to rest because if you get ill, you don't get paid. Scrapers of pair up, they're not that big, not as good as you know, big as New York stuff. Um, and the main, the main one which you can't actually see, which has got kind of like a pyramid roof, which is behind that HSBC or Barclays building. There you go, behind there, that's kind of built mid 90s. And this little one came up in the last sort of, 15 years, uh, quite cool though. <coughs> And then just beyond that, in a minute, you'll see the city of London. People moan about congestion. But look at this, no one is in the left hand lane. It's like, it's clear as a bell, and I am being very, very careful not to entertain people. And especially as a police car going past. But look, nobody drives in the left hand lane. Why? Totally clear, apart from this muppy with cross me. Hey, no, never mind about your lime lane markings, pal. Oh so, in a second, you should see Big Ben. Hey, here we go. Well, it's slowing down to go straight on. Well, there you go, just hidden behind the trees. So it's pretty good, I mean, I left the house less than an hour ago, so it's taken me oh, 50 minutes to get here. It's pretty good. It's sort of far enough out, and that's kind of the advantage of driving in versus getting the train, is that it's an hour and a half minimum to get here on the train. In the car, I can do it in 50 minutes. But, that's on a Sunday morning. Oh, and it's... James asked me a question he, uh, for the vlog. He said, um, you know, how do I go about preparing for gigs? I'm kind of trying not to do what I'm doing here, uh, which is sitting in masses of traffic. I try, if I can, to rest at least a few hours before a gig. Not as much for the gig itself but actually for afterwards the next day because I tend to find that if I get home from a gig especially a gig if I put a lot into it like a jazz gig I'm normally buzzing when I get home uh, which means that I'm late getting off to sleep over the years one of the big things I've done is try to be careful what I eat before a gig try not to eat spicy food before a gig curry's kind of no no and I do like curry salads or pasta and chicken just kind of need things that are not going to, you know, make me feel bloated or bulky. Just things that are nice and easy to eat. I have moved about half a mile in the last 25 minutes. It's rather depressing, not quite sure what's going on. On 
long way to the gig. Just driving up to Cambridge again. You'll notice I do spend a lot of time in the car and that is very much what you have to do if you're a musician, really. I read somewhere that you shouldn't really listen to like Miles and Coltrane on the way to a jazz gig because it kind of can cloud up your mental imagery of what you want to play. And I've got to admit, sometimes when I'm on a gig, I do like to drive to the gig in silence. It's a bit like when I'm teaching, I always start, I'm, I'm practicing, always start with long tones, just to empty your head of all the clutter that's in there that you've carried with you. Last week was the London Marathon, and a uh, army officer collapsed and died just three miles from the finish, normally perfectly healthy guy. And his girlfriend was talking in the interview. And I thought it was a lovely sentiment. You can tell I'm a bit of a romantic at heart. What she said, he said to, he used to say to her, because she said she got stressed and red lights. He used to say red's the color of love. And it means, a red light means we get to share this journey a little bit longer together. Kind of poignant now he's dead. But, you know, value those moments. Those red lights gave those two those extra precious moments. You don't know when things are gonna change. So, I'm trying not to get too stressed at red lights. Helps if I'm not running late. <laughs> So I hope that Purple Rain recorded because I got to the microphone at the end of the gig on the camera and the green light wasn't on and I'm kind of hoping I've not made a real beginner's mistake and forgotten to switch the mic on at the start of the second set. If I have, I'm really sorry. Purple Rain was awesome. Whole place singing along with it. And when you get to the end of the gig and everybody's walking out, singing the melody that you've just played, it's pretty cool. <laughs> purple rain, purple rain. 